Hello and welcome back to Newsmakers. I'm Jane Ambugda along with Andy Mahalshik. And today our topic of conversation is the Luzerne County Sports Hall of Fame, celebrating 40 years. And when I first start looking into the Hall of Fame and I start talking to our guests, I thought we we're gonna be talking about, you know, athletes from year to year. And we found out that they are so much more and so much deeply rooted into our community. It's really about bringing the entire community together through sports, which is a great thing. So Andy and I are very pleased to be joined today by Carol Zubers. Carol is the historian and public relations for the Luzerne County Sports Hall of Fame. And Jim Martin, who is the president of the Luzerne County Sports Hall of Fame. They are two very dedicated volunteers who give of their time. And uh, we want to just let everyone know um, more about the Sports Hall of Fame, because I think people know, they hear, you know, Luzerne County Spor Sports Hall of Fame, we're honoring um, athletes but you're so much more, as we said. So we're gonna start with a little history lesson. Let's give us a little history of uh, the Hall of Fame. How did it all begin? Okay, in 1985, six gentlemen got together and said, we need to start recognizing this prolific sports history that we have in our area, in Northeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, that it was uh, Jody Simone, it was Sam Falcone, and the ringleader of it was Dr. George Moses, who uh, stayed on as our ex executive director till his passing. Um, they created the purpose, and the purpose of that was to be a nonprofit organization that looked to perpetuate accomplishments and community services of both female and male athletes uh, who have brought lasting fame and recognition to our region and to the state of Pennsylvania. Not only was it just those individuals, it was also those who um, were in managerial or in uh, promotional uh, aspects of sports and officiating people that kept the ball rolling, people, people that kept it moving forward. And uh, that's how they started to derive who they wanted to place into the Hall of Fame. In Northeastern Pennsylvania, Luzerne County is really a great resource for sports from the players to the managerial to ownership. It really is a hot spot for sports. And a lot of people come into our business, in the media business, say, I didn't know that. There's a connection with this person, that star, right here in uh, North Northeastern PA. And you know, you talk about your Sports Hall of Fame and, and part of the Hall of Fame, but it's not just Luzerne County. So expand upon that a little bit for okay. us. We represent proudly Luzerne County, where Jim and I are from, a Wyoming, Bradford, Sullivan, and Northern Columbia County. So we're all over the place, but we started in Luzerne County. But you, you've you extended it out to the other athletes, yes. and you've been doing this for 40 years, and when you click on the website, you can you know, see some of the past members of the Hall of Fame. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. Our active involvement in these other uh, counties has, has brought in some pretty recognizable uh, athletes. Uh, we've had Red Grange from Forksville, from Sullivan County. Uh, we located his only living relative, his granddaughter. She came in from Chicago to accept that award for him. Northern Columbia right now, we have Jason Turdeman. They're, they're the athletes of these five regions are so profound that we cannot not place them in alongside our people from Luzerne County. And they are names in a national sports folklore. Mm -hmm. You know, people say, well, it's uh, this in different situation awards. Well, it's, it's Northeastern PA, but nobody else knows these folks. That's not true for, for so many. Right. How many, uh, Jim, how many people now are in the Sports Hall of Fame, Luzerne County? Okay. Do you think there's about over 731, 731, mm -hmm. and we have 28 chapter statewide for the, Pen for the State Hall of Fame? So not only are they are some of the members in the Luzerne County, but they're also part of a, the state the state Hall of Fame. We oh, are the 42. I'm sorry, 42. Yeah. Right. We're very well represented at the state level. Yes. Uh, we have 42 members uh, that are in the state level, and uh, last year we had two go in: Jan Hutchinson from Bloomsburg, prolific uh, uh, field hockey coach, a softball coach down there, and we put Jean Garilia from Duryea last year in. And Jean Garilia was in our first class in 1985. Uh, and it took this long to work him toward placing him. But finally, the man who has his whole career on NBA championship teams got his due and be, was placed in the state. And, and I don't think people realize the work that you all put into this and, and, and gathering and, and putting together this kind of a program. Uh, but we do want to talk about, you know, this year's Hall of Fame. You have it coming up, coming up in June. So let's talk a little bit about we want to show the members of this year's class of Hall of Fame. Okay. So. We'll start with what football. Uh, football, we have uh, two of the most uh, 
energizing athletes to play football at the high school scholastic level uh, locally. Then they were the Ismail brothers, uh, Raghib the rocket and Kadri the missile, Ismail. Uh, Frank Bauer, who led the United States in all categories uh, of passing efficiency, Division I, Division II, and Division III at Lafayette College. And Ray Yakabonis, who was the first uh, football player from East Stroudsburg University ever drafted to the NFL. Wow. And I remember, a little side note here, watching the Rocket play football. When I started Eyewitness News, mm -hmm. some of my early duties were covering high school football. And I was a lot younger then. So I'm along the sidelines, and everyone heard how fast <laughs> the Rocket was. So I'm covering games at Myers, and you don't realize how fast that guy was mm -hmm. until you're standing there and it's like the flash. Mm -hmm. I said, this, and everyone yeah. knew he was going places. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. But until you see him in person, up close to person, uh, uh, that close, he was quite the athlete. He's still, probably still a good athlete. Oh yeah, all he needed was a crease and he was gone. Mm -hmm. that was there it, yeah. you go. And then you're also honoring this year ice athletes. So tell us a little okay. bit about that. Okay, we have Taylor, Lillian Dean. She's being inducted for her contributions to ice skating. And Jason Turdeman, who was in the uh, Pyeongchang Olympics for snow, I, I'm sorry, was it snow? Luge. Snow luge, yeah, okay, so. And then you have a category called martial sports, so explain that to us. Martial sports are kind of like combat sports. Everybody today knows it as MMA or UFC fighting, but where it all started from was two separate sports combined together. Uh, we have uh, Fritz Bleich, one of the greatest wrestling athletes scholastically in our area. He was uh, a three-time district champion, uh, two-time regional champion, and a, a state finalist and champion for Hanover Area High School. And he was the very first three-time George Hooper Award winner where he won the award for every single year being the best wrestling athlete in our conference in District 2. And the other martial athlete is Sam Heider. Uh, he's been with, in karate for 48 years. And what he has accomplished is he uh, was named uh, the Karate World Fighting Champion uh, Athlete of the Year. He went to St. Petersburg, Russia and fought in the first open free tournament with, in Russia to, and he garnered a gold medal there, brought that wow. back to the United States. And he had a professional fighting career on the northeast of northeastern uh, United States of 33 and 0. When you're talking about going to Russia, I'm having flashbacks of Rocky versus Ivan Drago. Uh, what was, the, what was the last name in the movie? Uh, Ivan Drago. Drago. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if he dies, he dies. And I, if I have the great honor of meeting Sam over the years and covering news stories and things like that, great guy. And I didn't, wasn't aware of his background until I, I saw some of the bios on these guys. Mm -hmm. Didn't know that he was really, really top notch. He, You'd he, want him in a foxhole with you. Oh, without a doubt. I want him, I want him standing at my right, back. Right, you got <laughs> it. What's the criteria? I mean, all of these bring different uh, talents and experience in the sports world. What are some of the criteria to be nominated for this Hall of Fame? Uh, you can be nom anybody can be nominated. Uh, but we ask what you do is take a look at what we already have in and try to make a comparison. If you feel this person is truly deserving, you can do it online with us. But the criteria for it are um, you have to be retired from the sport at least three years or you have had to be c active right now for 10 years. If you're still in the sport, you have to have a 10 year reign of that. If it's a deceased person that you want to place in, that person has to be deceased for over a year. And they have to have a representative come to the banquet and accept on their behalf. And we require everybody in the living category to come and accept on their behalf unless a health issue uh, pushes us to do a virtual uh, induction. And you know, we want to con continue on. You, you said that they have to be you know, in the sport um, for how long? At least 10, ten years. Because some of these people are very, very young. Because let's, let's talk about field hockey. Okay. You have the, the two young ladies in field hockey. So uh, tell us a little bit about your inductees. Well, Amanda Faust, she played on the very first state championship team that Wyoming Valley West ever had in 2003. She was a stellar athlete, uh, uh, midfielder and a defender. And then she took her talents to Bucknell University where she uh, became the rookie of the year. She was uh, first team all honors for all four consecutive years while she was there. She still holds records for goals and assists at Bucknell. We have the head coach of Bucknell right now is Kelsey Kolajacic, who was also an Olympian uh, from Wyoming Seminary, and uh, now she is the coach there. And then uh, Amanda is on their 25th anniversary team, and she's in Bucknell's Hall of Fame. Sarah Silvetti. Uh, Crestwood High School state championship uh, captain there. She went and uh, parlayed that into a uh, athletic scholarship at the University of Maryland. Uh, she played in 
three Final Fours. She was in a, a, uh, the NCAA Finals, and she was an All-American there, and she took that and was invited to the national camp to be on the national team, and she had uh, the opportunity to represent us in Beijing in the, in the Olympics in 2008. Now, there's a category called Endurance Athletes. Who are they? What's that all about? Do you like to run? I used to. <laughs> <laughs> I should actually start more, but that's a, a conversation for another day. Well, Sean, right. Sean Robbins, the, uh, the ultra marathoner, triathlete, distance marathon extraordinaire, uh, he's finished high up in the rankings of the Ironman in Hawaii. He, um, he has won over 130 different triathlons and running races, the run for the diamonds in Berwick. He's, al he's always winning that. And, um, and that's after a couple of pretty serious surgeries. He always makes his way back. And he actually uh, uh, ran in Lusanne, Switzerland uh, at the ITC uh, World Championships. And the other endurance athlete is Eddie Zawatsky, a swimmer from Wyoming Valley West. Uh, he won everything in his age groups as a, as a youth uh, swimmer. Uh, and he even got a, uh, an invite to the 2016 Olympic trials. And he wasn't even 18 years old yet uh, in, their, in their sprint medleys. And he took uh, his talents to Purdue, Purdue University and parlayed that into a four-year uh, athletic and academic scholarship. And now he, he coached in college, and now he's back home coaching in Valley West. It's, it's amazing that when we're looking at these people that you're thinking of the careers that they've had and, the, and, the, mm -hmm. um, and what they bring to our area. And now they continue, like you say, you know, as coaches and as, as people that, are, um, <coughs> that we look up to as role models in our community, each and every one of them. How proud it is probably to be, to be given this honor for, the, for these people over the years. Mm -hmm. I think that um, it's testimony to the fact that these people want to come and give back because that's what sports teaches you. The individual work ethic, but also to be a team player and to share your, your successes and to lead by example and be able to uh, walk into a room of kids and say, you can do this too. This is something that's very important to you. you this is what you need to get there. All you have to do is get, put your nose down, roll your sleeves up and get busy. And you know, sports, we've all known this for years is, and probably more important in these days, in this era than ever, sports brings people together. Oh, without a doubt. And brings communities together. You're not R, you're not D, you're not independent. You're playing a sport. So you could sit next to somebody, don't care about the politics part, religion or anything like that, it's about the sport. And if you're watching your daughter ice skate, Carol, or play field hockey or wrestle, that little boy or little girl, you're, you're guiding them along and it's all the same same mission. You're hoping they could move forward and achieve something great. And many, you know, just by sure. participating, you're doing great stuff. But to get to the level of these folks, that's just unbelievable. I think that Carol can speak to uh, the time that it takes for figure skating to to do the things that happen. Just the basic skills for the learn to skate. I was talking about earlier about the old Isorama, how it was under disarray in the early, late 1999, and then we got funding again from uh, the government to make the uh, Toyota Sportsplex. There was one time it was, I was the only skater there helping people, the only pro there, because there was such a demand for it. I mean, one day I showed up for the Learn to Skate and there's like 40 people. I'm like, you're it, Carol, you got to do it. Mm -hmm. and, but I just kept on going and going and the momentum built up and eventually we built up a great skating community and I'm still skating today on the square. You could still come down and skate with me every mm -hmm. year. The mayor put up the ice rink. Mm -hmm. And we do a community service down there. We uh, offer free ice skating lessons. I do that every year. Every Christmas, I help the kids out on the square for free. It, it's great. So that's what we do, part of giving back to the community. And I, I do want to mention, both of you are yeah. in the Hall of Fame. C Carol for ice skating and, and Jim, you're in for, for the, the I martial, martial, arts. martial, martial arts, arts. arts sports. Tell us about the, the martial arts school your family had and some of your background. Well, my beginnings are the Wilkesbury YMCA. I, I went there. So I started there when I was six years old. I used to go to the Saturday afternoon programming, and um, they had a judo program. And my uh, my uncle started in that, and my dad started in that. And judo was a little bit too hard for my dad because he didn't, he had a bad back and all. But I I really took to judo, and uh, I stayed with that. I became a, a Pennsylvania state champion. 
I, uh, I was an Eastern national champion. I went to the United States versus Canada, and I had hoped for an Olympic bid in 1980, but we didn't go to the Olympics because of uh, the Russians right. being in Afghanistan. Right. So we boycotted the Olympics that year. But then I had to come to a reality. Do I want to continue with sports or do I need to get a job? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, sometimes you have to, those are harsh realities that you have to face. And I actually got to go to the 1996 Olympics in Atlanta. And when I walked into the judo venue, I was speechless because that's where I had felt I was destined to go to. Isn't that something you just, uh, what, what, you know, what, what we don't know about people who we are, in our community, it's just it's. I just think it, it, you're bringing us all together and giving us a, an insight into into your organization. But I do want to mention that you also are inducting some um, people that are honorary inductees, and one of them was um, a, a, a familiar face here on Eyewitness News, who is a Adam Zucker. Mm -hmm. So he's your media. Uh, honoree. So uh, tell us a little bit about that. And then, of course, um, uh, Kathy Bresnay, she's going to get your service award. And Ellie Bartoli, who was also on our uh, mm -hmm. on our newsmakers oh for um, we, we for uh, NEPA okay. Inclusive. So tell us a little bit about how they, uh, they'll be honored. Well, we'll start with Adam. He was here around the time of Jim Miller and Sid Michaels. Mm -hmm. And uh, he seemed like a perfect fit to that to that group because he I really liked his deep and his, his tonality when he was uh, uh, talking on, on TV. He is a graduate of Syracuse University and he was passing through town and he got uh, a call that there was a position that opened up here and he, uh, he tested for it and uh, he was given the job. And I thought that he did, from what I remember of him being here, he did a remarkable job in bringing to light and to putting the best things about 28 out there in the sports public. Uh, the, he had a large viewership. And we felt that uh, by honoring him, it was taking somebody who had taken gra uh, you know, grassroots learning, what they learned here and learning about our community and ta taking it to a national stage. And now he's with CBS Sports and he, does, he did the Final Four, he's gonna be doing Penn State football and he's just a talented individual and we're just so proud that we were able to, to bring him home and honor him with this. And uh, Ellie Bartoli. Ellie Bartoni, she is one of our honorees, our three honorees. She is re represented by PA Inclusive. Uh, she is going to receive the Tracy Tribendus Profile of Courage Award, an individual that works to overcome obstacles. Okay, her and her father have started the PA Inclusive Board. She's a barista there. She's very proud of it. And she's doing marvelous down there and we feel that we just want to honor this individual we are all in the past we've honored kathy bresney she has got the sam falcone community service award she oversaw greater more than greater uh wilkes-barre area 10 funding uh fundraising community effort awards the kiwanis officer of the multi multiple positions over a decade tracy tremendous she was the first one to be inducted for our special olympians and it continues it also continues with also um our other individuals that we had there as well, um, Aaron Keller, he was a special local, local Olympian who medaled at the most recent Special Olympics in Abu Dhabi of all places in the world. He went there, can believe it, and Audrey Jumper, Quinn Crispell, and this year we're going to honor our Ellie Bartoli, and I can't wait to meet her. She's really wonderful. Can't. You'll love her because we've had her on Newsmakers, yeah. and she's just, just a, a lovely young lady. And um, we are going to take a quick break, and you can find information on today's program on mm -hmm. pahomepage.com. We're under the Newsmakers link, and you are watching Newsmakers. We're a proud recipient of three Pennsylvania Association uh, Broadcasting Awards for Excellence in Public Affairs Programming and a Keystone State Award, and we'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the Newsmakers, Andy Mahalashik along with Jan Bugda. Today, our guest special guests are Jim Martin, president of the Luzerne County Sports Hall of Fame, and Cal Zubris, a historian and public relations director of Luzerne County Sports Hall of Fame. And Carol also worked in the media and local radio and stuff, so oh, yes. we go way back, and it's an exciting a business. A long time, not that long, mm -hmm. do you think? Not yeah. that we won't say how long, <laughs> yeah. but we, we're talking about sports yeah. today, and it's so much more than you know the lines on the field or scoring points. It's about the human story and where, how they worked so hard to become successful. And you recognize these folks for that. Not just the sports, but their life achievements. Mm -hmm. and, and you're also part of the community. So let's talk a little bit about your community role in community service. When uh, Carol and myself pretty much came about within the body of the committees uh, for the Hall of Fame, 
we felt it was uh, important to take what we learned from sports and to give back with it. Um, before we started to do, to do this, uh, there were no initiatives within the body of our organization which provided funding for other nonprofit organizations that we could uh, uh, help them along their journey. And what we did was we started out with the Hazleton Integration Project. Um, Bob Curry and, and the folks up there do a remarkable job with programming and services. Then uh, I worked along with a group from Challenger Baseball. We wrote for a uh, $90,000 LSA grant and got that to help fix the baseball field up at the bog in, in Miners Mills. Uh, then we went on to work alongside of uh, Juvenile Diabetes of Northeastern Pennsylvania. We provide monies for them to create and purchase the foodstuffs for those children who need specific food uh, items over the summer while they're at camp. Then we, we picked up a really responsible one, which is called Brave Athletics. That is for the, um, the well-being of adolescent young ladies and their mental health, and not just to teach them about sports, but to teach them about life and talk to them. Then we have uh, Special Olympics of Northeastern Pennsylvania, uh, Luzerne County, uh, Sandy Wazetter and her group uh, with Special Olympics doing an outstanding job. Uh, Wilkesbury YMCA, we provided for them um, changing tables. Uh, something that was so necessary for their learn to swim programs that they were able to, we bought them four changing uh, stations that come off the wall. And then uh, we do, we work cooperatively with Leadership Northeast uh, with Toys for Tots campaign and we just picked up our most recent one which will probably be our last one for a little while, it's called Patriot Cove and that's for people uh, in the service or in uh, emergency services with PTSD. It gives them a place to hunt and fish and, and just regain themselves. Where can people, or like sp sports memorabilia, it's almost like the Hall of Fame, can people go somewhere and see sports memorabilia? Good. Okay. Well, it's at the Wilkes-Barre Scranton International Airport. It's right there in the lobby, and Jim ha and Mary Jo Horomchuk have been working effortlessly to keep it updated. You gotta talk about that. It's something that um, we, the Hall of Fame used to have a, a museum at the Ashley Furniture Warehouse on Monday Street, and then there was a fire there, and a lot of the water damaged a lot of our stuff, so we took it out of there. This is when I first started, because I've been with the organization 10 years now. And um, I was picking my mom up at the airport the one day, and I looked, and they had a case that was half filled with something, so I walked right into the executive director, Carl Beardsley, and I said, I could put a museum in there for you if you want something that people will stop and look at. He said, go ahead. So we've do, been doing it now for six years, over 250,000 people go through that sure. every year through that airport. And where are you going to say that you had that many people look at your exhibits? Right. And you right. know something, and the best thing is we don't get a dime for doing it. And we have been, we won awards three consecutive years in a row for the best of the best with the Times Leader. We've gotten the silver award three consecutive years and we get no funding for this. All these are our actual physical artifacts, primary resources that the, they've either worn on their body or they've used to compete with, and they lend it to us, and we place it in there. And I, I'm kind of a stalker. I'll go up there and <laughs> sit in the chairs, and I watch people go over, and little kids pressing their noses to the glass. We're helping to foster a dream with a lot of kids. But you know, very quickly, I mean, on social media, if you say, oh, I got 250,000 views, boy, that's a lot. That's, that's old school stuff. Oh, yeah. But you have people, and how many of us go to airports, you're waiting for someone to arrive or for a flight to take off. You got time to kill. And that's a great thing, you could educate them on, on what's happening, the, the great sports connections in Northeastern PA. Oh, without a doubt. That's awesome. And we're strategically placed right between the bathrooms, so you can't miss us. <laughs> there you go. We, we have about <laughs> two minutes left. I want to talk about this year's event. It's coming up on June 9th at the Mo Mohegan, uh, Pennsylvania. Tell us what's going to happen that day. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you do. Okay. Well, on the 9th, uh, we actually moved it from downtown Wilkesbury to to Mohegan, uh, and we changed the venue time. We changed it from August to June. Uh, it was more palatable for people to come in and, and have things and, and you know do, you know be a part of it. Uh, one thing I did want to mention though, the scholar athletes that are also a part of what we do, we give we have given away over fifteen thousand dollars already to over twenty two schools within the five counties which we which we serve. So that's really one of our proudest right. points is that. But um, on June the 9th, uh, you can get your tickets online. You can uh, purchase them and you can purchase an ad for someone that you, you care to congratulate. Uh, everything is at on Luzerne County Sports Hall of Fame .com. You can go right there and, and do everything you need to do to come and join us. But it's a really wonderful event. We, we have 
video collage, and we, it, it, it's, it's a well-structured, well-organized event. So we have under a minute. I want to remind everyone that the information you saw today will be on pahomepage.com. We also have a lot of the videos, a lot of showing their uh, community service and some of the other awards that they give out mm -hmm. throughout the year. We'll have that on pahomepage.com. Carol and Jim, thank you so much for what you do. Mm -hmm. um, right. We appreciate you coming on here today and letting us know all about the sports. Can I say one more thing? Well, we, we're getting ready to okay. say goodbye. Okay. So you can join us, uh, okay? You don't have to be an athlete to be part of the Luzerne County Hall of Fame, Sports Hall of Fame. So you, you can, can join find us to be on the committee. You don't have to be an athlete. You can be a fan. Right. And you can find out more information on pahomepage.com. We're under the Newsmakers link for Andy Mahalsh. Again, everyone behind the scenes. I'm Jane Ann Bugda. We thank you so much for making Newsmakers part of your day. And we'll talk again next time.